So I'm going to be talking about enabling data discovery with the Munson. My name is Sam, uh, and I'm actually a data engineer at Edmunds. Uh, so for, the, for uh, those that don't know, Edmunds is a car shopping website. Our mission is to make car buying easy. Uh, oops, there's a poll moving that away. Uh, our data engineering team size is around 10 people. Uh, core data users, only around 50. Uh, data size greater than 100 terabytes, and we have much more than 1,000 tables, last I checked. And the problem I'm going to be talking about today is uh, no centralized documentation historically and no catalog to find tables that we're interested in. So how can we um, solve this problem? Well, last year we decided that it was finally time to actually look into a data discovery engine or a data cataloging tool. Uh, and we sold it to our business uh, because there could be cost savings, which is always a good thing. Uh, less duplication, let's not create something that already exists better deprecation, maybe we can more easily figure out which tables are no longer needed based off of update history, et cetera. Uh, we, there'll be faster development time for our data scientists, our engineers, our analysts, and then maybe even we will have new business insights just because people can find data sets that they didn't even know existed. And uh, so this was the lay of the land, at least from our perspective last year, we broke it up into three broad categories, uh, the first being closed source. Uh, you know, you need, need some money involved uh, to go in that direction, but there's a lot of good products out there. The second, uh, we coin old school open source. Um, just older technologies still look like they work great. I know that Apache Atlas is still being used today and actually even integrates with the Munson, which I'll be talking about, uh, but we weren't so interested in going that route. And then finally, new school open source, which is uh, very brand new projects, new approaches within the last uh, year or so. Obviously, the winner for us was Amundsen from Lyft. Uh, thanks to the Lyft team for that. Uh, why did we end up choosing it? Uh, well, uh, it, well, so we didn't think that the cost for closed source was going to be worth, worth it, at least for our organization. That might vary for others. And as I already mentioned, we didn't want to pursue Hadoop um, technologies at this point. Uh, we also really liked Amundsen, Amundsen's architecture and approach. Um, it leverages a graph database, which we thought was very smart for modeling relationships. Uh, it integrates with Airflow, which we already use. And it's also highly customizable, which I'll show you in the demo. And finally, uh, the fact that it's open source is really exciting for us because it gives us an opportunity to also contribute to the project. So let's get right into that demo. Exit out of this. Okay, so hopefully you guys can still see. Uh, this is the landing page for Munson at Edmunds. You can see our logo up here. It's part of the customization. I'll start off showing you the uh, most, you know, one of the most important features, which is the search. Uh, that's obviously a big reason why we need this. Uh, you can do a uh, free text search here. So I'm gonna just start typing in zip. You can see that it has inline search results um, plus a, uh, a number representing how many results were found. Uh, we're, this is searching through the table description, column descriptions, uh, and even other pieces of metadata. I know there's, a, there's quite a few actually that are included in that, um, those search categories. Uh, it also has advanced search functionality. So we can click here. And let's say I was or only interested in tables that are in the vehicle schema. So I can do that. And great, look, all the vehicle tables. It also supports wildcard. So maybe I don't know exactly what the schema is, but that'll also work too. Uh, moving down, uh, we have tags. Um, so these are actually user curated uh, fields uh, that are edited in the web UI itself. Just a different way to group tables together. Uh, for example, maybe it's a raw table, which has no processing done on it, or maybe it's silver, there's a little bit of processing done on it. I mean, this is obviously gonna be very specific to your organization. And again, it's user curated. So uh, pretty much anything goes, at least for right now, um, for, our, for our side here. And clicking on one of these will give you all of the tables for that particular tag. Uh, moving down, bookmarks. Um, so we actually do authentication via Okta, which is obviously very handy. A lot of organizations use that. Uh, and this is just, you know, there's other things that are user specific, but one of them is that you can highlight tables that you're interested in. Uh, and I'll show you another thing that relates to users in just a second. Uh, popular tables, this is just based off of frequent usage information. Uh, based on the, you know, the number of queries happening for a table. And this is a great way for maybe new users at your organization to figure out which tables they should be using. All right, so let's jump into a specific table. Unfortunately, I only can get permission to show you kind of a simple demo table, but I think it still you know, delivers most of what I want to show. Uh, so the first thing here, you can see that this is the name of the table. Um, this is a hive table. 
and it lives actually in our Databricks environment, um, which I'm not gonna go into. Uh, this is the table description here, which is editable. Uh, it supports markdown, which is why you can see the bold and the, the bullet points. Uh, we can request a description, so maybe it's not filled out, or you know, maybe some of the column descriptions here are not filled out, which they definitely are not. Um, this will automatically email the table owner or owners, and you can provide some more insight into why you want these descriptions, et cetera. Uh, this is the tags that I was referring to from the main page. These are also editable. You can delete them, et cetera. Um, right here is date ranges. Unfortunately, this table is too small to be partitioned, but if you have some massive uh, partition tables um, on S3 or wherever, this is a great way to uh, show what is the earliest partition available and what is the latest partition available. Uh, last updated, uh, this is very valuable for our users as it indicates um, when was the last time this table was written to. If it wasn't written to for you know a month or a week or several days, then there's probably something wrong with the table. So it's a at least a, a simple check to say, should I be using this table? Uh, these are the owners. Uh, these are the frequent users, which clicking on that will actually take you to that um, particular users page. Uh, I already kind of briefly talked about the columns and column descriptions. These are also obviously editable. You have the type here. And then finally, um, everything below um, this field is uh, auto-generated. Uh, it's called programmatic descriptions. And this is, uh, at least for our company, this is where we customize Munson the most, at least at present. Uh, you can see here this, this integrates with our anomaly detection tool uh, and, and shows a health status based off of how many um, uh, tests are failing on a given day. So if it's green, that means, hey, analysts or whoever, you're, you, know, you should feel confident that you can use this data as it is now. And if, it's, if any of the tests are failing, this will show up as red. Uh, this is another simple S3 integration, which you know, will show like cost, et cetera. But again, you can put wherever, whatever you want here. And then finally, also related to the uh, anomaly detection stuff, this is a chart showing context. In this case, it's pretty useless, but if it was a little bit more of an interesting data, data set, it would flag potential anomalies and it would also show the trend over time. Um, yeah, so those are the, the uh, big pieces that I wanted to show from the demo. Jumping back just to finish off the presentation. Uh, so we released uh, a month into production beginning of 2020, uh, but mostly just geared towards power users. Uh, the reception has been very positive via surveys. Uh, it definitely has been something I think a long time coming for our organization and that's what we've been told. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have detailed usage statistics for you uh, just because we are not automatically collecting those yet. Uh, looking forward, uh, we want to push Amundsen to be the single source of truth for the whole company, not just those power users, the data scientists, et cetera, that are currently mostly using it now. Uh, we want to iterate on those data quality features that I briefly showed you, that chart, the badge, and then finally also ingest Tableau dashboards. Um, and that's that's it. Thank you so much.